Ventilator mode classification. Primary breath control variables. Primary breath control variables is the first out of a four-part series of presentations related to the classification of mechanical ventilation. Uh, this presentation and the following presentations, or the presentations to follow, are adopted from Robert Chatburn's article, Classification of Ventilator Modes, Update and Proposal for Implementation. Now, when we're talking about ventilator mode classification, there's three main schemes. One is the breathing pattern, the other is control types, and lastly, the operational algorithms. Um, during my series of presentations, I'll just be going into the breathing pattern and control types. Uh, the content of this presentation, I'll go be going over volume control, pressure control, and dual control ventilation. A control variable. The control variable is the variable that the ventilator uses as a feedback signal to control inspiration. Now with volume control, what the ventilator is trying to do is trying to maintain an inspiratory volume waveform despite changes in the respiratory system. So I'm going to show a bunch of slides from the ventilator. And the first group is a series of three sides, and it's going to show the changes in the resistance. So this is volume control mode, and we're going to look at the pressure waveform, which is in blue, the flow waveform that is in red, and if you think of flow, it's mathematically the same as volume. We're going to look at the exhale tidal volume, and we're also going to look at my resistance and compliance, and also my peak pressure. So this is the first part, this is the baseline. And the next slide kind of grays it out to show my baseline. So when I make changes on the test lung, you'll see the differences. So here we did, we changed the resistance to a higher resistance to 12. The peak inspiratory pressure went up. And the flow waveform remains constant. So the ventilator is gonna try to get in the constant are the same volume every time. And the volume display is kind of breath by breath. It's an average of breaths. So it will remain the same throughout. It just takes a while. And as you notice, volume is constant and my pressure is changing. and It's starting to increase versus my baseline. Now this next set of slides shows a change in compliance and what it does. So we're going to look at the same waveforms. We're going to look at my pressure and we're going to look at my flow. We're going to look at my peak airway pressure and my minute ventilation. And we're going to look at my compliance. So I decreased the compliance to 31 from 51. What that does is it increases my peak inspiratory pressure. However, my minute ventilation remains unchanged. So my volume is constant again, or my flow is constant. Uh, this next slide is just another demonstration of resistance, a change in resistance, and how it affects um, vo and during volume ventilation. So here's our current flow waveform pattern. Our current peak airway pressure is 18. Our current minute ventilation is 5.5. And our resistance is 5 and compliance is 54. So we increase the resistance to 11. This is increases my peak airway pressure. You notice it's going up. However, if you look at my flow waveform, it stays consistent. Next, pressure control. So with pressure control, the ventilator is trying to maintain a pressure waveform despite the changes in the respiratory mechanics. So the first slide is we're going to go over the um, changes in compliance and resistance, and this is the baseline. So our baseline is a peak pressure of 21 or 20. Um, and as you can see with the pressure waveform right here, it's at 20. Um, we're going to look at our flow waveform. And we're going to look at our minute ventilation. And also our resistance and compliance. So the, first sli the next slide, we're going to have a decrease in compliance. Our compliance almost got cut in half. Our peak inspiratory 
pressure remains constant. It's trying to maintain that constant pressure waveform. However, this is going to change my flow waveform. And since I changed my flow waveform, my exhale tidal volume is much different. Um, the next slide is the change in resistance. So we changed the compliance back to the normal compliance. I increased the resistance. I had no effect on my peak airway pressure. Since we're in pressure control, the pressure remains constant. However, my flow changes and my minute ventilation will change from that because a decrease in, comp um, decrease in tidal volume. Now with dual control, what happens during dual control is the control variable switches between pressure and volume within the same breath. And a good example, there's two examples of this. One is the Pmax mode on Draeger ventilators, Avita series. And it's very popular in their anesthesia machine, their Apollo anesthesia machine. And another mode is VAPS, or volume assured pressure support in the bird machines. So I'm going to um, demonstrate the Pmax in a Draeger machine. So here's our baseline right now. We're starting out with a volume controlled breath. So our volume is going to be constant up to a point where it hits a pressure limit. So we have a peak pressure of 22 now. We have a target tidal volume of around 500 cc's. And here's our flow waveform. So the grayed out is the background. That's our baseline. And as you know, um, looking at the flow waveform in red, it's very consistent to the baseline flow, even though I made changes in compliance and resistance. So my peak airway pressure has gone up some. And as you notice from the blue peak airway pressure waveform or pressure waveform, that the pressure is starting to increase. And my tidal volume of my target of 500 is remaining constant. The next breath, um, or the next series, is I increase the resistance to 30 here. As you see, the resistance has changed to 30. What this does is it increases my peak airway pressure to 37, and it increases my peak airway pressure. However, if you look at my flow waveform pattern, it's very consistent, which gives us the same target tidal volume around 500 cc's. So our volumes maintain to a certain extent. And as if you notice, my pressure waveform is starting to square off. So this is where I have my P max limit set at. So it's starting to look like a pressure controlled breath. So here's the next slide. And actually, I have my P max set at 35 centimeters of water for protective. What it did is it, um, it doesn't prematurely end the breath like a, the old IPPB machines that terminated the breath when it hit a certain pressure, it's just going to limit the pressure. And that's what Pmax does. So it's limiting my pressure at 35, and it does change my flow waveform a little because my pressure is limited, and it will affect my tidal volume. So that's Pmax. So it'll s be a volume control breath, and then it'll switch to a pressure control or pressure limited breath if it meets the Pmax setting. And this ju just demonstrates, this is a Pmax of 40. It hit my Pmax of 40. I had the Pmax setting at 40. It started out as a volume controlled breath. The flow was consistent until it hit my Pmax, changed it to a pressure controlled breath, and that affected my tidal volume. So, in summation, there are three primary breath control variables, volume, pressure, and dual control. The control variable is defined by what remains constant when the ventilator experiences changes in the imposed load. The ventilator can only control one variable at a time during inspiration. However, it can switch between variables during a single inspiratory phase. 